we're going to do the rear rotors and pads on our uh, 2006 WRX. Uh, if you watch the front first video where we did the fronts, it's pretty similar to that. So uh, what, what you have different, instead of a 17, you got 14 millimeter bolts that hold the rear caliper on. And uh, you've got to, uh, still same sort of thing, pop the little thing out there and you've got Phillips heads on those bolts, which is a bit different. But anyway, we'll uh, start taking it apart and uh, we'll have a look at the handbrake shoes, which are internal inside here as well. So get the 14 mil, get on the nuts on the back and we'll uh, break those and get that out of there. So that's the bolt we want to remove right there. We'll get the brake bar on it because it'll probably be pretty tight. The uh, torque settings on the front were 80 newton meters. Break the top one. I don't know if we can get in there this way, but oh, we've got an extension that'll be able to do it. I don't know, come all the way through here. Watch your brake line, of course. Yeah, okay, they're not on as tight as the front. I think these have been done recently, so that'll explain that one so we'll just pull those out now there's the one yeah that looks like pretty fresh hardware you had these done at the dealer the previous owner they just machined the rotors and replaced the pads they didn't change the rotors at all can i get this in with that brake line no okay ratchet it is to the top one but first i think we'll remove the pads so we're just going to undo this little Gonna do this little wire clip that kind of goes through here. Just a little spring loaded wire keeps these pins from coming out. There we go, just a little tug. Remember the orientation so that it goes over the back that way. Although I thought it went that way, but no, okay, we'll just do it the way it was because dealer did this before. Okay, and then the pins, uh, we'll get a screwdriver and we'll just start removing those. But I think they come up pretty easy. No, they got a Phillips head on them, but no screwdriver required. Just release it there and you can just pull them, pull them back. So I can do that with my fingertips. So that's just pushing in on the spring to take the tension off. And we'll give these a clean up with some light, some wet dry sandpaper like we did the fronts. And then the back one shouldn't really be under tension. No, oh, there we go. Remember, if there's any orientation now, this is exactly the same top and bottom by the looks of it, so that'll be fine. Okay, now we've got the pads free. We'll get some room on them so we can uh, get some wiggle room and push back the pistons. Now, I do have a pad spreader, and I think, if I recall, we might need it here. I can't remember if these wind out like some of the European ones or if they... Uh, if they just push back into the into the into the caliper anyway that one to push back just by squeezing it um they got a metal shim on the back but i think the new pads have their have their own i'll have a look, quick look at this one but yeah that looks like anyway that's the one pad it's pushing on it with the thumbs and that should be enough pressure to release it yep there we go Okay, those pads are out. So they're fairly new, but we're gonna replace them anyway. I don't know what they are. So they were done at the thought of the dealer, he said, but I've got an invoice for it all. Okay, there we go, pads out. So if you only came here for a pad change, you can pop the new ones in after you push these pistons back and you're done. So we're just give that a clean, back, clean up. Now without touching the boot, we're just gonna push them. Yeah, they just go straight back in not having to screw them with some special tool like you do the Euro stuff, which is awesome. So be very careful not to tear the boots here. We're only pushing on the metal of the piston. If you have an older car or it does a lot of track work, you probably want to uh, probably want to get some new boots and rebuild them anyway. So you know, I'm just cleaning out some gunk that's in that piston. 
Let's just see some dirt there and I'll do that one. Well, it'll all come out when I take these off anyhow, so. Okay, we'll take off the top bolt and uh, and take this caliper off. So we're gonna get a cable ties ready and we're gonna hang it from the shock so it just doesn't hang on the brake line. There we've got our cable tie and then hanging. Now the rotor is probably just on there with some good old rust. parking brake no doubt inside but that is disconnected make sure you've turned you've undone your parking brake so as long as your parking brakes loose you can uh, you should be able to pop it right off anyway a couple whacks of the hammer in a better angle and we'll be able to get that off now I have been wailing and wailing and wailing on this thing with the hammer and it's not budging and I remembered oh yeah there's a threaded hole here for just this reason so Went to my bucket of bolts, found a bolt to fit, and we gotta tighten it up and it should pop it off. And there's another one you can put up there. So we got a hole here and one up here. So we'll tighten these up. There we go, it's moving. Okay, now, uh, I don't know if I've got the same size bolt here. Put in that one. Yes, I do. There we go, you can see it's coming right off. Still a little tight. Anyway, there we go, pop. Oh, that sounds like... The handbrake is getting hung up on it, but it should be all off because it's released. What is going on here? Okay, we're at the end of that. took some more pounding after screwed in the bolts and uh yeah i guess the handbrake shoes were just i don't know everything's tight here so um i don't know if we're gonna have to adjust that there's a little spring here to wind it back here um we might have to adjust that a little bit to get these new rotors on if there's not much wear but these are these look like the same like the front same markings so i'd say they're the originals well I've got record of them being machined, but not replaced. And he's got uh, service records from new. So anyway, fresh rotors to go on the back. All right, got the wire brush. Give everything a little bit of a clean. That it was, these were new pads and they're supposedly pretty recent. I can't remember, I'll have a look and see, but there's not a lot of corrosion on here. We don't have salty roads, but we'll put a little bit of anti-seize on there anyway. clean all right so a little bit of copper anti-seize here this stuff does high temp up to uh 982 degrees celsius so uh that'll be hotter than i think our brakes ever get we'll put a little bit of anti-seize on here so it's gonna the rotor's gonna sit there and then we'll put a little bit on the face here Okay, smear that around, we're good. So these DBA rotors are pretty cool, slotted, vented. Uh, of course, they've got heat, heat paint on them, so you can tell you're cooking them. Now, they do have that oily film on, so there's no corrosion during transport and stuff, so we need to clean that off. Um, brake cleaner. 
and this case paper towel or a rag or whatever you got handy and we just got to wipe it down now we're going to wipe down the inside where surface where the uh brake shoes for the handbrake go as well so and then after we've done that we don't want to touch it of course so there we go let's clear some other garbage out of there Now when we pick it up and handle it, we're going to try to just do it from the edges. Or we can get our fingers in this section here because that's not, uh, that's obviously not going to be on the inside on the uh, handbrake. Okay, that's clean so we can hang this up. Because we have some new rotors here, you might need to adjust this, uh, which is the parking brake uh, shoe. How wide they are. Now we're just going to stick this on. Oh, it should just slide over. Yep. There we go. Slides right over. Okay, now to make it a little bit easier and keep things aligned, I am going to just put a one nut on. It just keeps things aligned when I'm going to put the uh, caliper on. Okay, that is uh, secure. Now let's just bolt the caliper on. All right, we'll cut the cable tie free. And okay, caliper is free and clear, and we're just going to line it up so no pads are in. Go. Just go finger tight and we'll get the torque specs in a second. Okay, now we're gonna to torque those down. So, I don't know, it looks like the fronts are 80 Newton meters, which is pretty high, but the rears, I'm not sure. These ones aren't, weren't on very high, but they're not on the hub. They're on the, some kind of, there's like a carrier. I don't have torque specs for them. Everyone seems to have them for the front, not the rear, but anyway, there's 80. So I'm gonna go with 80, because uh, I'd rather not have them coming loose. Now, how is this going to fit in here? Hmm. It's a short extension. That is a too long an extension. All right, well, we'll get the top one to 80 with a short extension. That's uh, what, 56 newton, uh, pounds foot and 80 newton meters, pretty sure. Now it's time for the pad. So these don't have a pad wear sensor wire, but they kind of have that clip there, which goes somewhere. Where the heck does that go? Oh, maybe these aren't the right pads. That'll suck. Not the right pad. It looked like the right pad. Fits right in like that. That thing means 
Ah, they have to be fit off the freaking. Uh, okay, so we just gotta take it off, take the caliper off, and fit the pads off. Okay, no big deal. Just had to unbolt the caliper again and uh, slide that pad in where it hooks in with that little thing. Okay, now we have our little spring set up here so there's no apparent top and bottom. Okay, I don't think there was. There's no. Yeah, it looks pretty symmetrical. Okay, now we have some little bit of grease here specific for these caliper pins. I don't know if you need it or not, but I use it. Uh, and I gave these a cleanup. So I gave them a little, just wipe down with brake cleaner and uh, and uh, a touch of some light, very fine uh, wet dry sandpaper. So a little bit of this on here just to help slide it all through. It doesn't need much. It's just gonna get it all over the place. So lightly on there and we'll pop it in. Remember the Phillips head was on the outside, so it should just go through there. Yep, nice and neat. To the top one first, hold it down. That's all the way through. Okay, pin number two. Touch of grease again. You don't want to get grease on your pads, remember? So careful there. Let's go through there over the spring and then push that through there we go through the holes okay now uh it's a matter of always well, a little wipe there and there now we need to put that wire back on that was on the other side and um if you look at the orientation of the holes in those pins they are not correct so we're going to be turning them actually that would be pretty handy to have a screwdriver for that but uh let's just have a little turn Phillips, but okay, I'm gonna have to get a Phillips, I guess so. I should be able to turn it by taking pressure off it. I did that with the front anyway. Pressure off of pushing the spring. Yep, and then turning. There we go. Okay, with the little things aligned, we can get this pin in here. And that's just gotta go in the little holes. That's it. Now, um, all you gotta do now is obviously, you know, give some pumps to the pedal before you take off because you don't want to have a soft pedal. Um, and yeah, maybe do a brake fluid bleed because that's uh, not a bad idea to do once you, uh, once you put new brakes on. Alrighty, now I'm just under the car. You can see here, I'm facing the front of the car is that way. And this is the right-hand side. Now, to adjust the parking brake, there is a little rubber kind of plug you need to pull out. And behind that, there is a, let me get this other light on it here. Hold on, a little, and you see the bit of silver? Those are the teeth of, uh, of like a cog, like a gear. So they are used to space out the shoe that are in the, in the rear drum here. So we need to back those off uh, by pushing them. I think we need to push them up I'll have to check. Uh, yeah, we need to flick them basically up until they stop, and then we need to back them off a couple so that there's some movement. So we'll get a flathead screwdriver, and hopefully got enough room to get everything in here. And we need to feel our way in. And that's it. We just need to get the screwdriver in there and flick them up a few times. So we'll it was pretty loose, so we'll give it a few goes and see how far we, how many we need to go. We'll try to count. Yeah, I've done both sides. I got them. I kept turning until they stopped, and then I moved them back one, two, three, and uh, we'll check the handbrake now because the handbrake was moving straight up and not grabbing anything. And now, let's see here. Oh yeah, handbrake works. And they said there's still more adjustment you can do up underneath here, but uh, that's that's gonna be good for us now. Then that means both sides should be pretty even as well. So result, um, that's how to adjust your rear parking brake, handbrake on a uh, 
Impreza. So that'll be, I guess, any of the GDs. So 2001 to 2007 will all be like that. Now we got to put those little rubber pieces back in so we don't fill the brakes up with uh, dirt and water. Putting them in should be the same as when we took them out. Oh yeah, that's it. Actually, they're a lot easier to put in than take them out. But yeah, that's a rear brake, rotor, and pad done on the WRX.